Good evening, everybody. Thanks for everyone who is joining us on Periscope for tonight and also on Twitter. A bit of a different view for you this evening. And if you are just tuning in for the first time, this is our usual weather overtime video blog where we try to update you on what's going on with the weather situation in and around the Mid-South area. Again, pretty quiet for tonight. Hopefully going to be staying that way into the course of the rest of the area for this evening. And again, nothing showing up in the way of major problems for tonight. But we may see, again, the possibility of some more changes coming our way as we get into the very near future. Give me a second here while we welcome in all of our Facebook personnel and give everybody an idea as to what's going on again for this evening, kind of doing things again on the uh, fly here for tonight as we see again for the possibility of some more chances of showers and thunderstorms back in the forecast for right now and then we get into the course of the rest of this next week and we could be seeing some more problems uh, into and around the area as we get into the next couple of days. Irma is on approach and we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit as soon as I can get the Facebook stuff going and as of right now it may be a couple of seconds before we get that done. In the meantime we are outdoors in the backyard tonight so as of right now a decent amount of quiet conditions here in the area and hopefully again going to stay that way still not working okay we may have to do facebook a little bit differently for tonight unfortunately depending on uh, what's going on here for this evening so again thanks for joining us let's go ahead and get started and show you a little bit more about what's going on at this point because as of right now we see again the potential for some more showers and thunderstorms back in the forecast but nothing showing up into tonight and as of right now the big weather story is of course back into and around the area of florida as what's left of irma continues to churn its way up the east coast of or out the west coast of florida and making its way again into and around the area of Sarasota, Tampa, St. Pete in that location. And that's going to be, again, the worst of the worst opportunities for chances of showers, thunderstorms, and again, the potential for thunderstorms containing tornadoes as well for the evening and into early tomorrow morning. So this is going to be something that we're going to be uh, watching very carefully as we go throughout uh, the rest of the evening. Hopefully we've got a good enough signal here for tonight. And it looks like we are finally live on Facebook. So thank Thanks to everybody for uh, joining us for this. We are live and direct tonight from the News Channel 3 helipad in the backyard. You can see Big River Crossing, the Mississippi River back there behind me. And again, beautiful evening. So we thought, what the heck, why not drag out the News Channel 3 portable weather desk and let people know a little bit more about what's going on in the Mid-South for tonight. So no problems out here except for a few mosquitoes, which I may have to duck and dive here for just a little bit. Current conditions again and uh, information about the forecast in the blue bar down here at the lower portion of your screen. And again, very clear skies overhead for tonight and not really seeing too much of any major concerns for right now. Let's go ahead and take a look and see again for those of us just joining us on Facebook again beautiful conditions around St. Francis and Cordova fading sunset going on a beautiful view from downtown as well and a gorgeous view from Germantown for tonight. Thanks to everybody for joining us on Periscope and Twitter. If you're just joining us again the conditions down into and around portions of Florida not good for tonight. The hurricane has made its second landfall. It did make a first landfall in Key West earlier this morning. St. Petersburg, Tampa, Sarasota getting soaked by these just incredible amounts of rainfall moving their way on through. And this is going to continue throughout the course of the rest of the evening. So expecting a lot more rain and wind. Now the good news is that Irma has made its way down to a Category 2 storm. And that's good. That's still bad news for anybody cut in the middle of this at this point in time. And again, anybody who did not get out of the way of this, especially right into this area right here, is seeing some absolute, again, incredible winds. We've seen wind gusts of around 120, 140 miles per hour. Sustained winds in the area of about 70 to 90 in some locations. That includes all the way across the Florida Peninsula tonight. So a decent amount of problems into and around the area here from what we can see again. And that's going to continue to make its way uh, up the west coast of Florida. Tampa St. Pete is up next. And again, we'll be looking for more potential problems from that a little bit later on. Let's go ahead and show you what's going on here in the Mid-South area tonight after a quick check again of the satellite picture and showing you again what we're seeing for right now is again that storm right over Florida. But we also have Hurricane Jose well out into the Lesser Antilles, and that could be a problem a little bit later on. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little while. Irma is going to be making its way into the Mid-South area as we go into the next couple of days. Again, the storm is going to take a while 
while to make its way all the way up into and around the Mid-South, heading to the Northwest, and that's going to be bringing with it a decent amount of rainfall. But here's the cool thing. It is going to be making its way into very dry air, so this is not going to be what we saw with Harvey a couple of weeks ago. We are going to see some breezy winds, 20 to 30 miles per hour as this storm gets closer to us, but the farther it gets away from its power source, the ocean, the less we're going to have to worry about when it comes to anything involving huge amounts of wind or rain. It is not going to be anything like Harvey. Just want to reiterate that as much as possible. We will see some winds, we will see some rainfall, and that's something, again, we need to be taking seriously at this time. The Weather Prediction Center is showing the potential as we go into around Tuesday of the possibility of a marginal threat of flight flash flooding in the Mid-South area, and that, again, we could begin to see the possibility of some more problems with rainfall. I'd say about two inches plus into much of the Mid-South area, so that's something we're going to be, again, watching carefully over the next couple of days. Let's go ahead and run the forecast for you and show you a little bit more about what's going on. Low temperatures tonight, quite pleasant, back into the lower to mid-50s, maybe a few upper 40s between Dyersburg, Jackson, and Bolivar tonight, but that's going to be about it. Monday's highs in the upper 70s, very pleasant across the Mid-South area. Winds will continue out of the northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour, and that's just the lead up to what's going on with Irma. Low temperatures Monday night back into around the uh, mid to upper 50s to lower 60s. Uh, Tyrell McMahon, NOAA map, uh, which one were you talking about? The radar on that? We can bring that up again coming up in just a little bit. Welcome to everybody who is tuning in tonight from all over the place out across much of the area. Uh, thank you very much for keeping an eye on the weather with News Channel 3. Feel free to share our broadcast and let us know a little bit more about uh, what's going on into your area for tonight. Again, as we get into Tuesday, this is where we see again the potential for, again, the possibility of showers and thunderstorms uh, heading our direction, and that is again going to be heaviest down to the south of us. That that's where we'll also see the chance of showers moving into all of the Mid-South area as we get into the course of Tuesday. Monday night into Tuesday is where we see the rainfall from Panola County up to Dyersburg, from Jonesboro down to Tupelo. Good chances of rainfall all the way throughout Tuesday. And that's also where we start getting into the very breezy conditions, first out of the north early in the morning. And then as that storm system gets a little bit closer to us, notice right in here as the swirl of energy continues, that is the center part of what was a Category 4 hurricane, Category 5 technically a few days ago. And this is going to, again, be the possibility of seeing a lot of that wind moving on through. Now, wind gusts at this time, again, does not look to be major league problem, but it will be gusty out there, 20 miles per hour plus on the wind gusts as the center part of the circulation makes its way into the Mid-South as we go toward Tuesday night around News Channel 3 at 6, News Channel 3 at 10. The circulation is still over the top of us on Tuesday evening and then finally begins to work its way out of the picture, heading up to the northeast as we head into into Wednesday. But until then, we've got the possibility of rainfall out across the Mid-South and looking like we could see, again, fractions of an inch at first, but all that's going to add up and we could see some more problems with some flash flooding out there. High temperatures Tuesday in the upper 60s, highs on Wednesday in the upper 60s to right around the lower 70s. And checking in with the winds, if I can get the cursor to behave here, uh, that's where we see, again, that area of low pressure making its way back up to the northeast into and around northeastern areas of Arkansas. And then that will finally be leaving the area, heading up to the north and to the east of the Mid-South area, going up to around the Boot Hill, and eventually making its way out of the picture, going up into around western Kentucky. So it will be leaving the area, but it is just going to take some time to do it. And once again, it's not going to be anything in the way of major problems as in what we saw from Harvey. So very good news to worry about on that for right now. The winds at this time are going to be the main concern. And again, the gusts could be pretty breezy between Memphis and the Mid-South and Atlanta. Could be seeing a core of winds of around 20 to 30, even around 40 to 50 miles per hour as this thing makes its way up to the north and west. Two o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. Again, not doing too bad on the winds where we are here in the Mid-South area. But that core of the winds will be making its way up a little bit closer to us. And by Tuesday afternoon, it'll be a lot less than what we saw beforehand, but that core of the wind circulation will be right around the Mid-South area. So winds in Jonesboro will be out of the north, winds in Tupelo out of the southwest, and winds in Jackson out of the northeast, all swirling around that particular area. And that's what we're going to be expecting into the course of the next few days. Let's go ahead and take a look and see 
What's going on? Danielle Lerma, thank you very much for sharing our video tonight. Do appreciate that. Jose, out in the Pacific around the Leeward Islands. This is going to be a very interesting track over the next couple of days. The storm is going to basically loop the loop and head back toward the Bahamas after a curve toward Bermuda up to the north and then back to the west. If you are going to be uh, seeing the possibility of traveling toward the Bahamas, Florida, or the east coast, you need to watch Jose and see what is going to be happening with this storm. So again, please be cautious with that. Uh, Charles Puncho Gunter, uh, the Memphis will see about probably 20 to 30 mile per hour winds. Parts of northeast Mississippi, I think, will be seeing the worst of the worst. Some parts of the area, as we go to around, say, uh, northwest Alabama, that is where we could see the worst of the wind activity. Some of that could wander into the Mid-South, but it will be calming down as it gets closer to us. The farther it gets away from the ocean, the better off we're all going to be, and the less the storm is going to be that much more intense. So the winds, yes, but about 20 to 30 miles per hour, that's going to be about the main thing uh, at this time. Larry Ratliff coming in from Atlanta. The wind picking up big time right there. Glad everybody's safe at this point in time. Thanks to everybody for the uh, comments and the shares out that direction. Nikki Chambers, Senatobia and Tornadoes. As of right now, we do not have a threat of severe weather. Give me just two shakes to pull up the Storm Prediction Center so everybody can see more about uh, what's going on here. The severe weather threat is, of course, down where Irma is later on tonight. The threat for the Mid-South as we go into Tuesday is basically non-existent. We do not have a threat of severe weather into the Mid-South area on Tuesday, and that from the Storm Prediction Center. So definitely good news on that. So we do not see a threat of severe weather at all. Now we talked about Jose, again, looping the loop over the Atlantic and coming back to the west by the Bahamas. That could be a bit of a problem there. Of course, the big weather story tonight is, of course, Irma down to a Category 2 winds of about 110 miles per hour. And that's going to be crawling up the coast. Notice that dark orange shaded color right there. That is the hurricane force winds. And they extend from Miami, northwest of Homestead, all the way across across to Sarasota, Tampa, St. Pete, in that area down toward Fort Myers. This hurricane with hurricane force winds covers the entire state of Florida. That is a monumentally big storm. Absolutely huge to see. Now the good news is it'll be going down to a category one about the time it moves its way over Tampa, St. Pete tonight. A tropical storm by tomorrow afternoon as it hits the panhandle, curves up into Georgia and Alabama, and then it becomes what's called a post-tropical depression or basically just an area of low pressure as it curves its way into the Mid-South as we go from Tuesday afternoon into Wednesday. And then that system begins to rocket its way on out of here, making its way back toward the north and to the east. And that's going to be, again, pretty much the end of Irma as we see that moving on through the area. Big mosquitoes out here tonight. That's incredible. Now, what's going to be going on again here in the Mid-South? This is what it looks like on our 7 to 10 day forecast for tomorrow. Remembrance ceremonies, dedications, prayer vigils, things like that for the uh, commemoration of the victims of the September 11th attacks. Looks like most of the day should be okay, but again, we could see some breezy conditions as we go toward Monday night and some showers coming on through, and that could be something we're going to need to watch out for. Then on Tuesday and Wednesday, that's where we see the best possibility of showers. Very cool Tuesday, highs in the upper 60s with heavy rain and gusty winds, and we also see again that possibility of some of those rains continuing into Wednesday. Here's what I'm thinking right now. If this storm system, as it moves on through, catches what's left of a cold front, that thing could follow along that cold front heading away from us. And that means that the rain will come to an end earlier on Wednesday and then moving out of the picture as we go toward early Thursday. So I'm thinking right now it is at least possible that we could see less rain on Wednesday as the system gets on out of here and gets cut off by the dry air circulating around it. Now, these things, again, with areas of low pressure, air rotates counterclockwise around these things. So as Irma leaves to the northeast, it's going to draw up from the southwest a decent amount of warm air, which means that by the time we hit around next weekend, we could be looking at some very warm temperatures out there. Mid to upper 80s, that's going to be just above normal for this time of the year. So expect some warmer conditions across the Mid-South, but dry and looking very nice for outdoor activities as we go into next week. Again, great opportunity for outdoor stuff going on there. And more of our weather bug cameras and forecasts and information available again at the bottom of your screen at wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to find out more about what's going on there. You can catch my forecast throughout what's left of the rest of the weekend on Country 92.5 
and Oldies 102.3. And then also on AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio, Monday through Friday with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live. That'll be coming up tomorrow morning. We'll have the forecast for you. And if you can't listen on AM 730, listen on TalkbackLiveNetwork.org, and you can find out more information at this point. Uh, Charles Puncho Gunter, U of M area will be okay. Uh, everyone has to always have an emergency kit ready. That's always a good idea. And thank you for reminding me of that, sir, by the way, because one of the things that I wanted to talk about is, again, the preparedness level of what goes on down into that area. You need to be ready for these things to happen. If you're traveling, you especially need to be ready for what's going on here in the Mid-South area. If you'd like to know more about how you can get ready, all you have to do is go to ready.gov and find out more about making a plan for you, your family, your place of worship, your place of work, wherever. Winging it is not a plan. Getting ready for things, yes, it's terrible to think about. It's even more terrible to think about being stranded without information, without contact numbers, without water, without food, without any power supply, anything like that. Whatever you can do to get ready beforehand, especially telling your family members about it, is one of the best things that you're going to possibly need to be doing. And this is a great opportunity to learn more. September is, again, the American Preparathon Month. And if you'd like to know more about how to create an emergency family contact, contact plan, this is the time to do it. Now is the time to get ready, and be ready. Uh, FEMA.gov can help you more on that, and ready.gov can help you get ready for, again, anything in the way of disasters. We've also got a solar storm going on right now. We're not going to feel too much of anything in the way of a problem here, but we are seeing some radio blackouts taking part, place over the Pacific and up into the Antarctic and into around the polar regions, believe it or not, so we do have a lot of problems going on there. Uh, Maria Christine is it going to be real bad in Memphis? Well, if you mean real bad by the, when it comes to severe weather, no. Real bad when it comes to rainfall, yes, we could see some flash flooding going on. But as of right now, it looks like the worst of the worst from this storm is going to, again, be coming up in the form of a tropical storm, bringing us some rainfall. And that's going to be about it, along with some breezy winds. And that is really going to be all we see from this particular storm into the course of the next couple of days. I'll have more updates on the forecast coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10 in just about 90 minutes or so, bright and in the indoor air-conditioned studios without quite so many mosquitoes. I'm going to go ahead and call it a night for tonight. Thanks for joining us from the News Channel 3 backyard helipad area. And we'll continue to keep you updated on the approach of Irma and its after effects over the next couple of days on News Channel 3. Todd Demers has his forecast coming up bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak, so please stay tuned for that. And, of course, more details coming up on air and online. Join me on this page right here, wreg.com slash weather, for more information. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, live and direct from the beautiful, dry, comfortable backyard again with the exception of the mosquitoes out here. Join me for more coming up on News Channel 3 at 10 and more with Todd Demers bright and early tomorrow morning on Daybreak. Thanks for joining us tonight from the backyard.